Nice to see the two of you. They made the case for soil. We're here to make the case for mangrove. It can seem a little bit far away, maybe, for people in the audience. So, uh, Amandine, I'm going to just ask you to same thing. Set the stage, get us started. Give us like the three top global facts on mangrove, just so that we know what we're talking about. Sure. Hi, everybody. Who have seen mangrove in this life? Yeah. Wow. Oh, people travel. Wow, okay. you travel. You, you, you've taken the plane. Did you? <laughs> we don't have mangrove in Europe. No, we, don't have, we don't have mangrove in Europe because growing in tropical areas is really a forest which is um, between, coast, uh, between the ocean and the terrestrial areas. So it can grow in very constrained uh, situations with salted and unsalted water. The bad news is that mangroves have been destroyed largely and, and we're going to talk about it. But the good news is that we still have huge surface of mangroves. Today, we have still the size of Bangladesh. It's, it's huge. It's a huge country. So there is still hope. What we need to know, too, is that mangrove has a high potential for climate, for carbon. It's three to five times more uh, uh, sequestration capacities that mangroves have compared to um, temperate forest, for instance. Why? Because it's going into the soil. So we just talk about the soil. Um, and mangrove, it's not only climate impact, but it's also biodiversity, it's also social impact. So it's a beautiful ecosystem around mangroves. What's interesting is that one million people are living thanks to mangrove. They are fishermen, they are communities, and they are taking the fish uh, out of the, this amazing forest. What's also interesting is that in the country where we operate Planet Urgence, we can see a, an amazing biodiversity that you can only see in mangroves area. Um, speaking about the manatee, the lamantin, uh, speaking about proboscis monkey, it's uh, le singe nazi, it's a gros nez, it's incredible, ce singe. So there are an amazing impact of mangrove. Good news, we still have mangroves. We still have them. So we still we have them. them. Thanks very much, Amandine, for getting us started to set the scene. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you are the mayor of Kilimani. And so can you bring that, bring that home for you know, your job as a mayor? How are mangroves essential to your city and to its citizens? Well, thank you very much for having him here. Well, I grew up uh, as a child cutting mangroves to help my fathers pay for my studies. Because we used to cut mangroves, uh, either to transform them into coal or to help to produce a certain kind of alcohol which was coming out of sugar cane. So okay. that, that's how I helped my parents to pay for my studies. I only learned about the other importance of mangrove as she just clearly put forward after I became a mayor. And I be became a mayor in 2011 in my city. And Kelimane City is like six 100,000 inhabitants. It's a coastal city. Yeah. And as she said, uh, mangroves are between the sea and the other development area. So what my, one of the biggest challenges that I faced as a mayor were the constant flooding. Yeah. Because my city was built, I mean, as I said, it's a coastal city, and it was built on a swamp. Sometimes I ask, I mean, who was the crazy guy who decided yeah. to build it there? Because most of the time we get flooded, not only from the rainfall, but also from the sea rise. And actually on the 12th of March of this year, we were hit heavily by Cyclone Freddy. Yep. And as a, one of the consequences was that most of my city, almost two thirds of my city, was literally flooded, not only from the rainfall, but mainly from the sea level. In some of the poorest areas of my city, we had salt water coming into the people's house 
one meter and a half of salt water passing through, taking in everything from houses, from infrastructure, destroying schools, health clinics, and so on. So I became aware of the importance of the mangroves because when we, over the years, when we looked at what was happening was that the areas where people cut mostly the mangroves actually coincided or were the areas that were where the impact of the constant flooding was more severe. So then yeah. we started making the link or looking the reasons and we found out that actually mangroves were the first line of defense against erosion, against flooding, but also as six percent of the citizens of my city they get their income from the fishing industry, we realize over the years that their livelihood were becoming affected because less and less food were able of being captured and therefore their income were year after year falling. So we started taking attention to understand yeah. the importance of mangroves yeah. to my city. I mean, the, the example that you mentioned about the cyclone reminds us also of the urgency of investing in uh, this rest restoration of this ecosystem. And I mean, it was not the, the only cyclone over no, the past actually, year, right? It was the third or fourth, not. right? not. Uh, in the last four years, more than five cyclones hit Mozambique. And actually, the meteorological services this year, they announced that uh, from January to June, about 10 cyclones will hit the coastal side of my country, Mozambique. And my city, being a coastal city, is actually one of the most vulnerable cities. This year we had Cyclone Freddy. Uh, in the last two years we had Cyclone Anna, we had yeah. Cyclone Makwakwa, we had Cyclone Idai in 2019, we had Cyclone Kennedy. Yeah. So I mean, you just count them. Now we are like, even children at school, they're learning how to deal with Cyclone and we are having programs directed at the youngsters, at students, but also at women. So, because we understand that every year we are going not only to have more cyclone, but the cyclones are becoming more intense, intense. And, and therefore the consequences are really very hard Higher for you. Deal with. Yeah. And so when you took office uh, as a mayor, you designed the master plan for the, the city of uh, Kilimani. And so you included mangrove restoration as part of that master plan. Can you give us a concrete illustration of what that means, what's uh, embedded in yes, that master plan? Like, over the years, I realized that we needed something to help us deal with these challenges. Yeah. Because when I took office, we didn't have, um, the city didn't have uh, an updated master plan. And I literally felt as a pilot of a boat on a high sea during a storm or a cyclone and without a bussola. In that circumstances, you don't know if you should head your boat to the north, to the south, to east, or to west. Like you are there, you just know that you need to save your boat and the people or the goods which are there, but you don't know what to do. Right. So we started discussing with different stakeholders at local, but also at the regional and national level, that what is the main or the best instrument that we could introduce that would help us and serve as a guideline towards like, you know, trying to manage. Because to me, climate change is primarily a developmental issue. So we came up with a, a master plan. Actually, it took us almost eight years to have it because we didn't have neither, either the ex human expertise or the financial resources to have a master plan. And for example, in my country, the law requires to have a master plan, the law requires that uh, more than 10 national specialists be involved in it. And central government don't give, don't provide that resource. So you need to find the resources yourself, if you are a city, and fly in more than seven times, more than 10 people from the capital to your city, and actually my city is 1,800 kilometers from the capital, so you need to bring about eight times 10 people 
flying to your city. Yeah, that sounds which, like a headache. Which, I mean, yeah. it add, it's adding costs yeah. for, for having such vital instrument that helps any mayor or any local government to manage the city. But after all, we managed to come up with the human and the financial resources. So we have the master plan. In this master plan, the main outcome of the master plan was to have nature-based solutions yeah. as an integrated part and as one of the pillars of this very important instrument. And the issue of mangroves became then of a paramount importance and it's like the bulk of our master plan. And it's also generating, as we were discussing earlier, some local employment, take care of the nurseries. So it's also engaging uh, 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 your citizens of, uh, of your city. Definitely. You know, it brought this. a new kind of activism, be yeah. it for students, yeah. be it for, because we, we are creating uh, what we call youth clubs, yeah. student clubs, but also local disaster management teams in different locations in my city, so as to equip women, equip the youth, but also equip the local uh, community with instruments, but more important, with awareness and knowledge about this phenomenon and about the importance and how to deal with a disaster when it comes and why mangroves are important. I, rec I recall one of the, in one of those meetings where we are trying to raise awareness, when one of the, my citizen came up and he asked me, but Mr. Mayor, I don't understand. Do mangroves vote? And the question there was that, why are you so worried with mangroves instead of concentrating your efforts in finding livelihood to us? I had to explain them. Mangroves do not vote directly. But if you cut mangroves, and people cut mangroves for different reasons. One is, is because they are poor. They need mangroves either for cooking or to build their own houses. I mean, they say, we understand. Mangroves are important to build our houses, for cooking, for, because they are also a breeding space for fish, so that they biodiversity importance. They are not stupid. They understand it. But the question is, what are the alternatives? And when they asked me, do mangroves vote? The question was, why don't you care about our... About me. About me, yeah. you care about mangroves. So I had to explain that by caring about mangroves, I'm caring about them. About and actually themselves, they should be caring about mangroves because mangroves do affect their own livelihood, their income, but also mangroves are the first line of defense to my city. If we didn't have mangroves, today my city would have disappeared. As other cities in my in own province, world. Yeah. Like Chinde, which was a very developed city, disappeared over the years. And I'm going to interrupt you to, uh, thank you so much to make sure that Amandine gets a chance also to give some of this illustration, maybe from other parts of the world. With Planet Urgence, you also invest in mangrove restoration. So can you give us a concrete example of what you do with the organization to... to uh, and I'm dreaming them? that uh, many cities we are working uh, with are doing the same thing as, an, as mayor. Um, yes, Planet Urgence is an NGO, so we are, um, our focus is really to protect and, and um, uh, restore forests, and we are working where it matters. So yeah. first, uh, where you have vulnerabilities of people, uh, it can be climate change, it can be uh, uh, economic vulnerab vulnerabilities. We also focus where deforestation is and richness of biodiversity. Okay. And one of the examples is in Cameroon. So Cameroon, Douala, capital economic, you have four million people, and you have inundation, which are more and more common in the city, three to four times per year. So it's the same case. Yeah, we flood. see climate change, we see that um, uh, water is coming. But the reason here is that mangroves have been damaged strongly, 66% of the mangroves around the city. And before the mangroves used to play a role of buffer, used to play a role of um, like sponge and it's not existing anymore because people are cutting for firewood, they, they smoke the fish. Um, so the, the situation is we need to restore uh, um, an equilibrium between the people and the mangroves. So we are working with the, the support of the local actors like 
the mayor of, of Douala, but also uh, local chef, uh, traditional chefs. It's very important to go village by village and to discuss with a traditional chef. It can be also with a, a group of women, group of young people, and with the support of funders. So the group Orange and, and CR partners are supporting us uh, to be able to go at scale and to restore 1,000 hectares of mangroves beside the conservation. So what's important in this kind of project, as you were saying, is really to recreate the, the connection in terms of livelihoods. Yep. It's not only to restore, but it's really to create the condition of the sustainability of what you're doing. And the only sustainability which is possible is to create a link. If the people love mangroves, if they understand mangroves, if the kids are going to see mangroves, if they see this um, proboscis monkey in the trees, they will love it and they will protect it. If the people are living, earning their life thanks to mangroves, they will protect it. So it's exactly what we are trying to so do. So in terms of uh, how Planet Urgence operates, how is that different from, let's say, a classic development project where a big international organization comes to restore the mangrove in the same location? How are you op yourself operating differently from that? We are really a field-based organization. What we do is to understand where it matters the most, because today we have no choice but to do some priorities. Right. We can't do everything. We can't take all solution for, for good solution. We need to go where it matters, where it will, will have an effect. So it means you're mapping the most degraded areas exactly. and focusing on that. Exactly. Okay. So we're doing mapping country by country. And in the country, we will work with the local authorities. We will work with the local actors. We, 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 already, we, we always look for local actors. You have amazing NGOs. You have amazing organizations everywhere. They are locally based, they know the culture, they know the people. And they're already doing that, that job. Are, so, yeah. so let's try to empower these people. Let's try to give them the tools to, to succeed. So we're here to coordinate. Sometimes we do a little bit more than coordination. <laughs> we have to, but um, most of the time we, we find amazing partners locally and we work with them. And our team are organizing and, and, and giving the capacity to really act. We're also using volunteering. So if you're from companies, we do have some volunteers from companies who come to bring expertise. Because when you're in the field, as you were saying, um, you don't have sometimes uh, organizational expertise, marketing, or, or when you do corporate. So what you're calling for for people in the room is there are opportunity for funding for co corporates. You're already working, for instance, with two corporates that you mentioned, but also potentially, uh, you know, men and women power and, uh, and, and support to go work in this community through their CSR corporate programs, for instance. Yes, we do yeah. employee engagement. Uh, employee engagement. Okay, so the two of you, when you discuss about the importance of restoring mangroves for livelihoods, you also say that they are cut down for livelihoods, right? So there is this trade-off. It's cut to leave and yet you need it to leave. So how, do you, how is that managed at the level of your project? How are you managing that? Is that through awareness raising also or how? How does it's that work? It's a mix, and it's a most complex part because... Yes, chicken and egg here, yeah, right? Yeah, rewilding or restoring mangroves area, it's easy. You have the seeds hanging in the trees, you take it, you put it in the ground, in the good areas, and it, it's growing. We are in tropical areas, so it's growing very fast all, during all year. What is really important is the sustainability. So. It's, it's a really um, personalized approach. It's really depending on what is the culture around mangrove. In some countries, um, there are some um, um, non-scientist way of seeing things. Mm. So we need to adapt. To Working with local community. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, how do you deal with this trade-off? And that will my, if you can keep it short, because we're already out of time. That's concrete for you, because you need to be elected also to continue the work, right? So how do you deal with that? Definitely. Uh, I mean, first of all, I think it's engaging yeah. those you want to work with and yeah. you want actually to better their lives. You yeah. need to listen to them. Because most of the times we, we think that we know everything. But uh, uh, what I've learned is that uh, by listening, you learn much more. And actually, you get the ownership. And uh, once they own the project, once they understand the reason what you, why you are doing what you are doing or why you are preaching what you are preaching, then they will embody it. They will take it as 
their own challenge. And I think that uh, that will be halfway for success. So to me, listening and really implementing what you are hearing from the ground is of a paramount importance for any kind of project to succeed. Thank you very much. Tomorrow you're here as part of the mayor group. Is that one of the topics that you'll be bringing up? How to integrate environment and people oh, yes. for a city? Is that Definitely. One but okay. also leadership by doing it. Because most of the times yeah. people say and then when they go back, they don't practice what they are preaching. Okay. So people need to see that you are doing what you are preaching, which is very difficult. Because if the, the local citizens, they don't have energy, definitely the mayor has got energy at, at his home. Like, yep. you know, the house of the mayor is in a better condition and it's not made out of, of the mangrove. So how do you translate, how do you resonate what you are saying with your own lifestyle? I think that's, to me, its core. Thank you very much. One last word, Amandine, from you as we wrap up on the importance of mangrove restoration. Yes, mangrove seems to be very far away, even if you've been there for some of you but they are really core for our planet, and I really believe that we have plenty of solutions, but this one is natural. It's almost free, it's easy. So let's do it really, really at a huge level, huge scale. And let's invest in mangroves. Amandine, Mr. Mayor, thank you very much for joining us today. It was a pleasure. <laughs>